Hi, welcome to another session from tutorial sheet five, PHY 1010, 10.15 from the University of Zambia. In this question, we're going to be answering the last question from that tutorial sheet, which is question 10. Now, if you haven't had time to look at the question, um, you can just look at it, you can pause the video, uh, read the question, try to understand it and attempt it. You can pause the video and uh, attempt the question. Okay, so if you did try, um, yeah, let's see how we can approach it and let's see what we expected uh, uh, to find. Now, right, so in this question, if you try to look at uh, um, what the question is asking us, uh, they, they've given us a few conditions here. The first point is giving us a, a condition for a fracture of the tibia to occur. And then in this case, they're saying, uh, if you have a compression force of about 90 kilonewton, then you expect a fracture of the tibia to occur. So in our calculations, if we find a force greater than 90 kilonewton, then we expect that probably uh, during impact, the tibia is going to, to be fractured. And the second condition, they're talking about acceleration. So in this case, they're saying, talking about the kind of damage which can occur if a certain acceleration is achieved. So if we look at, if we look at um, what the second point is saying, it's saying if a rapid acceleration of the head occurs, even without skull fracture, um, it can be fatal. So estimates show that uh, head accelerations of 150 times the gravity um, experienced for that duration are 50, are fair to 50% of the time. So all we're trying to look at is um, are we, the acceleration that is going to occur in this case, given these conditions down here, are they going to be greater than this value given or they're going to be less than? So we're going to say, we're going to compare them to this and to 50 times G for 60 seconds, 60 milliseconds, okay? Now, the last point is talking about pressure. So here that's saying given, uh, of course, the surface area uh, and, and so on, and the force acting on it. So here the same, um, the data shows that if the collision lasts for less than uh, about 70 milliseconds, a person will survive if the whole body impact pressure uh, is less than 1.9 by 10 to the power five Newton meter squared. Okay. So in this case, we're just going to compare the force that is going to act um, on the person's uh, body given the, uh, the area of contact. We're going to compare it to this value. So if the force is going to be less than this, then we expect the person to survive. And if the force is going to be greater than that, then we expect uh, um, the person not to survive. Okay. Okay, all right. All right, so let's uh, let's try to, to attempt this question and see what uh, uh, what we come up with and see if the person survives. So uh, okay, so let's see what we have. Okay, so in the first case, um, if we just go back to the question. In the first case, uh, the first condition is for a compression force, okay. So for force, the, the number of ways we can find the force. So let's look at first what we're given from the question. So from the question, they're saying estimate the force, acceleration, impact pressure in a typical car crash, and predict whether there will be injury to internal organs, fracture, or fatality. Consider a typical collision involving a 75 kg person. So the mass of this person, M, is equals to 75 kg. And then apart from this, this person is not wearing a seatbelt and they're traveling initially at a velocity, let's use here for initial velocity of 27 meters per second. Uh, who comes to rest? So if they come to rest, it means that the final velocity is zero. So they come to rest in a time, uh, T equals to 0 0.01 uh, seconds after striking, uh, an unpadded dashboard, assuming the passenger crashes into the dashboard and windshield so that the head and chest combined uh, with a combined surface area of 
0 0.5. So the area here we're going to, to deal with, we're going to work with, is going to be 0 0.5 meters squared. Okay. Now with this, uh, the first part, the saying estimate the, uh, the force or the forces. So what we're going to look at is, so if you recall, um, force under momentum is given by the change in momentum. So force is given by the change in momentum. So this is equal to um, change in momentum over time. Yeah, so we're using the relationship for uh, impulse here. So impulse, we're saying this is equal to force over change in time, which is also equivalent to the change in momentum. So this, if you remember, give us the expression for force as the change in momentum over the time or the change in time. So if we use that, um, we use this, we end up with the change in momentum is just the mass, the final velocity minus the initial velocity over the time taken. So the mass of this person is 75 kg. The final velocity of this person, this person comes to rest, so it's zero. The initial velocity for this person is 25. So, so not 25, 27. So you have 27 meters per second. This happens in a time of 0 0.01. So if we divide, so we subtract here, we multiply and then uh, divide. So we we'll end up with negative 75 multiplying 27 over 0 0.01. And this gives us 2.0 times 10 to the power of five newtons. Okay, so this is the force this person experiences. Now, if you recall from uh, the first point, they're saying if the compression force um, of 90 kilonewton is experienced, so we're looking at 90 kilonewtons or more, is experienced, then we expect fractures of the tibia trocar. So if a force of, uh, let's say, greater than 90, greater than or equal to 90 kilonewtons, then the tibia is going to be fractured. So now let's look at this. The force we've seen is 2.0 uh, by 10 to the power of five. So if uh, we write this in terms of kilonewtons, this is the same as 200, um, of course, the power five there just means five zeros. So it's same as we, so if we move these two places, we have 200 kilo newtons. So if you look at this, this is definitely greater than our 90 kilo newtons there. So because of this, we're going to say, uh, we're going to conclude that um, the tibia uh, is going to be fractured. So we're going to, do, to, to expect a fracture here. Okay. So apart from that, let's move to the second one. So the second point is talking about um, the acceleration that can result into um, fatality. So in this case, um, the condition was saying, uh, it is well known that the rapid acceleration of the head, even without skull fracture can be fatal. Estimate, estimates show that the head acceleration of 150 G experienced for four milliseconds or 50 G uh, for 60 milliseconds are fair to 50% of the time. Okay, now let's see what we have in this case. So remember um, the values given here. So we have the initial velocity that the final velocity is zero at the time. So we have everything we need to find the acceleration or the deceleration in this case. So if you remember the expression for acceleration A is equivalent to the final velocity minus the initial velocity over the time. So the final velocity is zero. This person comes to rest. The initial velocity is 27. Okay, so of course this force, this, this is a negative force, sorry. Yeah, that negative can bring it down. But of course, doesn't really change much in terms of whether fracture occurs. The negative just implies that the motion is in the opposite direction. Okay, so yeah, we have zero minus 27 over our time. Our time is still the same, 0 0.1 seconds. So now we're just dividing uh, 27 by 0 0.01. So that's 27 divided by 0 0.01. And then you get 2,700. 
So we're getting 2,700, okay? So we get that 2,700. So of course, this again is a negative value, uh, but in this case, of course, uh, all we want is what it means. Is there an injury or not? Okay. Now, remember the condition was uh, for either 150G uh, or uh, 50G. So now let's divide this by G. Remember G, uh, G is equivalent to 9.8. So we divide it into that. What we're going to have is uh, 2,700 uh, divided by G. So that's um, A is now equal to 2,700 divided by 9.8. So this is, let's put our G there. So this gives us, so if we do that, divided by 9.8, 9.8, and we're getting 276. So we're getting 200, uh, sorry, not seven, 276 G. Okay. Now in this case, so because we're seeing a 276 G, this is definitely greater than uh, uh, the minimum that the person can experience without experiencing a fracture, uh, without, without experiencing fatality. So because of that, we're going to say, okay, in this case, uh, there's going to be uh, some injury to occur. Okay, so this is going to be fatal. Okay. All right, so let's move to the last part. The last part is talking about um, the pressure that the person experiences, so the impact pressure. So remember, pressure is given by force over area. So in our question, so if we go back to uh, the information given, we're given the, um, the surface area, the combined surface area, uh, that interacts or that hits the dashboard and the, the windshield. So that's the surface area of the head and the chest, which is combined to be 0 0.5 meters squared. So here we're saying our area is 0 0.5 meters squared. Sorry, not meter per second, meter squared. And you remember, we just found the force that this person experiences, which was two, times 10 to the power of five newtons. So when we substitute this in our expression for pressure, we now have the full value, which is, um, we, we got of course the, uh, the force here yeah, by getting the change in momentum, which was basically just 75 multiplying 27. So if we did that, we have 75 by 27, which gave us this divide this by 0 0.01, which gave us that. Now we're saying divide this value by, so this is our force. So that's 202500, divide this by 0 0.5. And we get, divided by 0 0.5, we get 4,000, let's say 400 and, uh, 405,000, 105,000. So you get 405,000. So this is pressure. Uh, we can write it in Newton per meter squared. Okay, now if we look at this value, this is also greater than the threshold for, uh, for death. And because of that, we can conclude that this person um, is at risk of uh, uh, undergoing or yeah of, of dying because the pressure they will experience from this impact or from the crash is greater than the the threshold condition okay so of course um, if you look at it it's 50 percent of the cases so there are 50 percent chances that this person this person is going to die okay all right thank you very much for, for following hope Hope this, this was helpful. If you have any other questions that you'd like me to, to just take you through, um, you can just get in touch. Uh, the email is in the description.
yeah so feel free to email me the questions that you might want me to uh to take you through otherwise uh we're done with story sheet five um yeah we look forward for for the next one yeah